What's going on today, guys? I mentioned it in my last video. I actually ended up ordering it uh, sooner than I thought I would because they were gonna go out of stock and it arrived even with all the crazy shipping that happens around Christmas. So we're gonna be throwing that in today. I'm super excited. The car definitely needs a tune. For those of you that don't know, it's got header, eggs intake, ported polished head, and a full exhaust. So I'm sure the stock ECU is not very happy. So we're gonna throw this in and let's go ahead and get started. So this is just a little Speedwino, and then Speedy F5 puts it in this nice case. They, it comes with the BMW variable TPS, the GM IAT sensor, the AFM plug to adapt to your GM IAT, some map line, and then a harness to go from your current TPS to the new BMW TPS. So um, I, there's been a couple guides on it, but I figured I'll just make my own um, and just sort of document as I go. Should be pretty easy and I'm excited. I still need to install a tuner studio and sort of get familiar with that on my PC, but yeah, so first step, we're gonna go ahead and do what this says and remove this here fuse so I don't forget to do it later. All right, so step one, removing this fuse. This is where the fuse box is, right beside your wiper motor. Um, and the picture's kind of weird because you look at it this way, but it actually goes this way. You're just removing this 10 amp fuse in the corner. So on the box, you can see right here, that 10 amp ST sign, that's the one you're removing. So you should just be able to pull this out. And there you go, there's your little 10 amp fuse removed. That's step one, easy. So as you can see, the intake is completely off and we're gonna do the IAT. I'm gonna just do it on the left inside here. So it's just gonna go sort of right after the, the stock air box. Um, and I think that'll look the best. I don't want to put it on the right side because I don't want to run into clearance issues with the power steering res or even that motor for the headlight. So we're going to go ahead and drill a hole on the inside here and hope I don't mess that up. There we go. You can see sensors in there. And whatever. So it's gonna go like this in the car. Good enough. That's one part down. Alright, next up we're gonna be installing this variable TPS. So we obviously need to remove the stock TPS first. Um but we can't do that without removing the throttle body just because there's not enough room here. Uh, the TPS won't slide all the way off. It hits the valve cover. So you got to take the throttle body off and it should just be four 12s. Yep. So once you've undone these four bolts, you know, obviously one, two, three, four. It's just two seven millimeters that hold your TPS onto the side of your throttle body. But like I said, you can't get it off um, with the throttle body mounted. So you kind of just have to pull it out of the way a little bit to be able to slide it off. And then... You're good to go now just like you do on all these other weird mazda plugs you just got to move the wire out of the way it'll focus there you go and then it just unplugs so simple enough and we can go ahead and throw the new one on and this next part's not going to be very easy to see but the shaft on the throttle body like blade thing you can see it's flat on the bottom right the flat side is facing this way it's keyed inside of here i can't get it to focus inside the hole but there's a flat spot whenever you look inside of it, you can see it. Obviously the flat spot on the TPS has to match up with the flat spot on the rod. All right, so that's on, here we go. And now we're just gonna sort of set this thing to the middle and then put these two seven millimeters back in. All right, so I ended up doing a little bit of rearranging. You can see this is the line for the stock TPS. I just kind of tucked it up underneath here and then behind these coolant tubes and then it connects up right here. It just makes this a little bit cleaner of a run. I didn't like the wires kind of sitting there flopping all over the place. I'll probably still try to tuck this in a little bit more, but whatever. Go ahead and bolt the throttle body back up. Remember the longer bolts go on the bottom. All right, I had to switch to the GoPro. Trying to record on my phone was just making me angry, but now, going to install this. This is the AFM 
GM sensor adapter. So obviously your AFM plugs right here. It normally just goes right here, you know, undo it. And then this, this just adapts this plug to the plug that I screwed into this rubber piece. So now that we have the AFM harness plugged in to the new GM sensor, it's time to run our map line. I'm gonna try to use this nipple and then run the hose along down inside the intake manifold. I want it to look clean. Um, but then once we get it routed around and back here, we're gonna be going into that hole right, right there. Running the line through it and that's straight in the car and then from there, it's just unplug ECU, plug the new stuff in, and we should be ready to rock. And we're gonna go inside the car now. It's gonna be a little difficult to see, but take the glove box out, obviously. And if you run it through that hole, God, it's gonna be so hard to see. See where your blower motor box screws in right here, or that's it's secured to the firewall? You gotta reach your hand up in here, and you can sort of feel where it's at. All I did was I took a Phillips head screwdriver and just jammed it through the hole and then came in here and stuck my hand up in there to feel where it was supposed to come out at and then I shoved the took the screwdriver out shoved the tube through it and then ended up having to grab the tube with some needle nose and pulled it through but now you can see we got the rest of our tubing just chilling in the interior so now we can go ahead and unplug the stock ECU and plug the new speed EFI in so to get to the stock ECU, you have to take this little rail off. It's four Phillips heads. There's supposed to be one here, two, three, and then four. Pull that up. There's going to be a little kick panel here. It's got a push pin somewhere. Pull the push pin out, and then you can pull your carpet back. I've already done this. Um, when I pull my dash out, I had this out because this was extremely rusty up underneath here, so I tried to fix it a little bit, but there's your ECU. So you can go ahead and you can just unplug it and pull it out. All right, as you can see, I plugged the map port in. I don't actually expect this to work, but okay, I can hear the fuel pump. Let's see if it, I don't think it's gonna start, but I don't know. I still have the garage door closed. It sounded like I wanted to. All right, well.